Welcome to the PadNet 2014 Election Forums. I am Derek Simpson, Executive Director of Long Beach Community Action Partnership and host of the forums. Our intent is to introduce candidates to the greater community and have them share their vision and thoughts for the coming election. On this show, we will focus on the 5th Council District. Long Beach is the 5th largest city in California and the 36th largest city in the United States. As a major city with international economic and cultural influence, leadership at every level is important in our community. The 5th Council District extends from our beautiful El Dorado Park on the east side of the district to Long Beach City College's main campus in the north of the district and our newly renovated Long Beach Airport on the west side of the district. In between are vibrant neighborhoods and great schools and businesses. I would now like to introduce the leaders in our community that believe they are best qualified to be our next fifth district council member in 2014. And they are Carl Kemp, who is a longtime Long Beach resident and who owns his own business. Kemp formerly served as director of community relations and government affairs for the Port of Long Beach and as a manager of communications and government administration. Joseph Leiben. Joseph is a lifelong citizen of the 5th District and started his company, JDL Packaging Systems, 23 years ago. Leiben has directed fundraising activities for a number of civic organizations. Stacy Mungo currently serves as the budget manager for $130 million of county, senior, community, and workforce job programs. Mungo is a three-term president of her neighborhood association and is a two-time recipient of Councilwoman Shipsky's Good Neighbor Award. Thomas Sufton. Thomas is a Millican High uh, teacher and a pilot. Well, with those being said, we have two of our uh, candidates here with us, and I want to thank you guys for taking out the time to join us. And I want to start with uh, asking the first question that I've asked other candidates before you, and that's all about vision, because when we talk about leadership, uh, every great leader starts with a great vision for those that they want to lead. And from your perspective, uh, Carl, what's your vision that you would like those who are watching to know for the 5th District and for the, the uh, city of Long Beach as you uh, are the candidate? Uh, first of all, thanks for having us on, on the program. Sure. It's fantastic that you have done the things necessary to bring this to our city, and we're lucky to have you. Thank you. Um, my vision for the 5th District is, uh, as somebody who uh, moved my wife, soon-to-be wife, my fiancé, my two kids, and my mother uh, into a home, uh, I have known this district as a great district for the 20 years I've lived in this city. I have done uh, things while an employee uh, for this city, for that district. It's legendary for its um, greatness in terms of where you can raise a family. Mm -hmm. The things that the 5th District needs are the things that um, most folks tell me when I knock at the door. They want good sidewalks. They want trees trimmed. They want parks maintained. They want streets repaired. They want public safety. The good news about the 5th District is it's pretty good and folks want to do what's necessary to maintain the goodness that have, that's made that the community where folks have lived in their homes for 40, some people over that 50 years. Um, my extended vision for the district is something that I think is easily attainable. The big picture for the 5th District in terms of economic development is we have Douglas Park and we have the C-17 program that unfortunately is soon to be phasing out. Uh, that's a huge opportunity to bring economic development into the city mm -hmm. and a huge opportunity to make the 5th District the nucleus for new business in the city. Uh, I'd love to see the folks who have those jobs now be utilized, uh, some 5,000 men and women who are highly skilled, uh, most of whom live in Long Beach. Uh, but at a smaller level, I think the 5th District can be a model for how we can focus on small businesses in this city. Uh, we have a lot of small businesses in the 5th District. These are the folks who know our name when we walk through the door. These are the folks who are happy when something good happens with our family and are sad when we lose someone. And these are the folks that we need to be taking care of. So along with Jerry Miller, who's a former city manager, uh, 
I'm putting together an economic development program that's going to focus on doing things to improve small businesses. As a resident, I would love to have some place to shop, uh, enhance my shopping and eating and dining and uh, maybe an occasional adult beverage opportunities in my own district. Mm -hmm. We have a demographic that uh, is upper middle income, high propensity voters, and to me it's unacceptable that we have to go to Orange County or somebody else's district to find a good meal past nine o'clock. So beyond that, um, not, you know, I don't want to take away from the meals that, that you can have there. I just want to be able to, to, to broaden our horizons. Sure. Um, that said, uh, my, my public safety priority is to uh, open up the fire stations in our district, open the ones up that have been closed, and, and do something seriously about the problem with our response times. Our fire department has the highest response times in its history, which is mm -hmm. unacceptable for a city of our size. If we are aiming for uh, a world-class image, and a world class, if we want to talk world class with respect to our, our public safety, we have to stop looking at what the other cities are doing and aiming for the ones in the middle. You don't get to be valedictorian by getting a C. So we need to start aiming a little bit higher with some of the resources that we have to focus on those. So that without taking up too much time, uh, that that is the essence of my vision. I know we have other questions coming sure, up. And take we'll, away from and we'll come back to some of the points that you just mentioned. But uh, Stacy, what would you say to those who want to know about your vision? Well, first, thank you again for having us. Sure. We really appreciate it. And Carl, I'm going to have to share with you Michael's Pizzeria, Pan Vamarn on Carson in our very own district, <laughs> and F Fusion Sushi. They're open late and great food all night long. So we'll definitely exchange some some <laughs> local spots. I know you're new to the neighborhood. Well, I'm not, so but you know, three restaurants for a district that has the most homes is a problem. We have many. So one of the things that I, I really value is having been a neighborhood association president and having been involved in the Neighborhood Association Board for so long before I was president, Long Beach is a big city of small communities. And each of those communities is unique and diverse. And what we have on the 5th District is, is pretty powerful. And you mentioned we have our highest voter turnout and highest voter registration. My vision for Long Beach is an engaged constituency. People who want to be involved in the very important decisions we have ahead of us in the years to come. We have big decisions related to the Civic Center and the airport with the C-17 facility and the businesses in the area. I've been out talking to business owners. People aren't aware of the diversity of our airport and the growth opportunities. And when I approach these growth opportunities, <coughs> I approach them with prudence for the noise ordinance that protects our quality of life. The quality of life of the residents is of the utmost importance. And for businesses to thrive and neighborhoods to thrive, we need to be sure that our public safety and first responders are taken care of. Um, organizations like the police department and the fire department are there for us at our most critical times, at our most vulnerable moments. And those are the organizations that we need to support because they are there for us even when we're not there for them. And so um, definitely an engaged citizen force. We definitely need to look at the land use around the airport and what we're going to do to support smart growth while protecting the quality of life and look out for our public safety, our public safety um, servants. We really appreciate what they do for us. And we've relied upon them, especially in the 5th District, as our constituency is getting older. Um, a call to 911 is often a call for critical services in a time of need. And we can't have fire stations closed. We need access, and we need those response times to be short. Now, staying with you uh, in the short time that we have before our first break, I want to ask, you know, we get into office based on the campaigns that you will both run. Uh, what would be in that first 90 to 100 days those priorities that those given that you would be that person that's elected and I'll ask you the same Carl what would be those priorities that we could look forward to addressing immediately if you were to be the next council person so a lot of the priorities depend on what we inherit based on the timeline of the projects that are before the council now mm -hmm. and one of the things you can count on is there are different skills needed to run for office and different skills needed to administer office as a budget manager in the county of Los Angeles I'm very familiar with the inner workings of government that allow us to break down that red tape. I would like to see a program that brings small businesses to the area. We've talked a lot with local businesses about a permit holiday mm -hmm. that would free businesses who bring in a certain number of new jobs to the area from their permitting and fee requirements <coughs> in that first year or two years. Mm -hmm. I would again sit down with the chamber and Jerry Miller and the others that have contributed to this economic plan that they've been working on for over a year now. They've interviewed dozens and dozens and dozens of businesses all throughout the city and helped come up with the ideas specific to 
how many jobs, what timeline, how long of a holiday, mm -hmm. to make sure we bring those jobs in right away. Also, we would work with our economic develop our workforce development board in Long Beach, the Pacific Gateway Workforce Development Board, and the Urban Land Use Institute. Those are organizations who know and understand, who are non-political, and they work very, very hard to ensure that the future of the decisions that we make are on a big scale of driving economic development. With the port of Long Beach and the airport, we have some opportunities to be nationally recognized in those um, business development areas. Mm -hmm. And so we would definitely be focusing on that. I would even go as far as to say that one of my council staff would be a liaison to business in that, in that time. I would also have a liaison to the community, which would partnership with our neighborhood community action organization okay. that's downtown. And I think that uh, community access is going to be important both in your districts and other districts as well. Carl, we're going to have to go to break in, in about one minute, but I want you to begin, and then we'll come back and let you finish uh, in terms of what you think your first priorities will be in, in that 90-day period of time. Uh, let's say you're in the office. Now what happens? What can we expect? I don't, you know, without, without sounding immodest, mm -hmm. um, there's a huge difference between county government and city government and we're a charter city we're not a general law city so mm -hmm. city government is, is extremely different than county government mm -hmm. and I've worked in both nobody running that I know of has the experience to start day one so I wouldn't have to ramp up for mm -hmm. 90 days my first job out of college was answering constituent calls in a council office so I know the basics of the job I know how to get those things done uh, and I don't want to take up too much time if we're going to talk more about it after the break, but I know that day one, mm -hmm. I'll be able to walk in there and know every city council member, every city manager, many of the 5,000 men and women who work very hard for our city every single day, mm -hmm. and a lot of the constituents. On that note, we're going to come right back with both Carl and Stacy, and let them continue to share not only Carl finishing up with what he thinks his priorities will be in that first 90 days, but we're going to get into what they both feel will be the priorities for the city at large, because as a person on the city council, they have to not only address the 5th district needs, but Long Beach needs. Stay tuned. At the Long Beach Community Action Partnership, we're very proud of the millions of dollars that we provide in utility assistance services. And we're also proud of the thousands of people that we assist, including youth, adults, and seniors. But what we're most proud of are the relationships that we build one-on-one -on -one with people just like you to build a stronger community. Join us in changing lives and making a difference. Are you tired of paying two and even $300 to get your income tax return prepared each year? So am I. Hi, I'm Trisha Heath. I'm the site coordinator for the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program run by the Long Beach Community Action Partnership. VITA is a partnership between the Internal Revenue Service, community-based organizations like this one, and thousands of dedicated volunteers who ensure that your return is prepared accurately, confidentially, and with no charge. If you would like your return prepared by us, or you would like more information about how to volunteer, please call us at 562-216-4610 or visit us on the web at lbcap.org. Thank you. Welcome back to our Candidates Forum. I'm Derek Simpson, Executive Director of Long Beach Community Action Partnership, and proud to be sitting here with Stacy Mungo and Carl Kemp, both of which are running for the 5th Council District uh, City Council person seat in 2014 and when we left Carl was sharing with us as Stacy had just done what he thinks his priorities will be in the first 90 days or so if elected uh, to that office and I want you to be able to wrap up your thoughts sure. uh, quick, Carl in that regard. Keep it going. Sure. Uh, first 90 days I want to sit down with the men and women of our police and fire departments to address two key issues number one property cr property crimes in the fifth district are on the rise uh, whether we, are, if we're looking at the whole year, you know, we're doing all right. But if we're looking in the last six months, there is a problem in our district. I want to sit down and address what the alternatives and options are specific to the 5th District to reduce the rash of property crimes that have 
taken off in our community. It's, it's a citywide problem, but mm -hmm. because the, unfortunately the folks in the 5th District do have some things that are uh, mm -hmm. desirable, there are folks there who, who are shopping where, where the desirable things are, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, and to sit down with FIRE to find out what we can do to decrease the response times. We have a lot of seniors in our district, um, and because we have so many seniors, the calls for service are probably higher than in other parts of the city. When we have an emergency in our district, we need to know that the response times aren't going to be hampered, uh, and I want to find out how we can fix that. Uh, economic development, I want to sit down with our city manager and talk specifically about the 5th district. Um, not just the airport, not just C-17, but what can we do to uh, create a fast lane for business in the 5th in the district? What can we do to reduce some of the obstacles that stand in the way between someone who wants to create their life in this city mm -hmm. and create a business in this city? Uh, what can we do to make life easier for them? How can we get to yes? Let's start with yes and work our way back. And, and the, the last priority for me is going to be really a maintenance of the great job that I think Councilwoman Shipsky has done with respect to reaching out. She is very good with respect to um, telling the folks what's going on and asking them what they want and staying in a constant communication with them. I'm a pretty savvy social networker, uh, but I will have somebody on staff along with myself to maintain what she's done and, and do what we can to take to the next, mm -hmm. the next level, whatever that may be. It's, it's interesting that you, you mentioned uh, your predecessor, so to speak, Jerry Shipsky. As you both know, she was very involved uh, in the greater Long Beach issues, not just the 5th District issues. And my next question is really relevant to uh, how you see yourself playing as a team member on the City Council. We've, depending on who you listen to over the years, uh, the City Council has been you know, at odds or in, in recent months, I guess some would say maybe they've worked together as best as they've ever done in terms of, you know, the budget issues that have uh, been addressed. But uh, Stacy, moving with you first on this particular issue, uh, give us your perspective. What can we expect of you as a member of the council in terms of how you see our council working more effectively to address the needs of the city? I'm very excited that when we take on our roles as council members, there will be a large number of new council members. Mm -hmm. And I've talked one-on-one -on -one with many of the other council candidates and mayoral candidates, and we've talked about the future of our city and how we have this opportunity to come together and put positivity first mm -hmm. and to really build together and grow together. There was a time like this several, several, several years ago where Chet Newland, he worked in four different presidential administrations and we had such a high turnover of the council that he came out and did classes with the new council members and, and talked about visioning and designing solutions together. And I think that having been called by so many other council seats that you can count on me to be a leader in these groups. Uh, it's, it's important as a council member on the east side where we don't have some of the violent crime issues that other council districts have to really spend the extra time available to do that extra work on the major citywide issues. Mm -hmm. And I'm always going to do what's best for the residents. This to me is a, a, a servant job. I look forward to reaching out and keeping residents involved. Um, Carl had mentioned it and we were talking with Jerry earlier today. She has committed to handing over her 5,000 person mailing list to whichever of us gets elected so we can maintain that citizen engagement. There are also some other great tools that can work in partnership with the current system we use at City Hall to broadcast our council meetings. There are some citizen engagement tools where households can log in and let the council member know what, how they would vote on issues. And I think that those are opportunities for us to really engage the citizens because um, times are changing yeah. and new families are moving in and we need to look 10 and 20 and 30 years down the road and make those good decisions now, the, the tough decisions, the economically um, sound decisions that will get us there. And when we talk about knowing and understanding citywide, uh, I'm very fortunate to have endorsements from council members and retired council members, both from my own district and other districts throughout the city because they know that I'm the person that's gonna take us there. Same question uh, to you, Carl, because uh, it's important. We need a team. We need uh, a city council that's going to, yes, represent their district, but also, most importantly, represent the greater good of Long Beach. What can we expect? Well, what you can expect is hard work from somebody who was made by this city. 
Uh, my first job out of college was in this city and every piece of bread I've had has been buttered by this city. So what, what I've learned about Long Beach is what I've learned as a man. And the people I worked under, like Jim Hankla, Jerry Miller, Beverly O'Neill, um, the things that they did and the things that I was fortunate enough to be a part of um, with folks like Frank Colonna um, have, in, have, have stained me and have made me love the city, which is why I'm running. This is the most dynamic election in the history of the city. If you ask the historical society, they'll mm -hmm. tell you the same. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was a question of, do you want to be a spectator or do you want to be a part of this? On day one, I will know every single person behind the rail, and it won't be somebody I just met. It will be people I have known for years and have deep and real relationships with. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what endorsements Stacy has from sitting council members or prospective council members, um, but I have those relationships that I know I can take to the bank because I've, mm -hmm. I've used those relationships in my professional life. I've used them on behalf of my clients, and I, I'm used to and comfortable with negotiating with council members. I've been doing it since I got out of college for council member Mike Donilon, um, for city managers, for the Port of Long Beach, and for every one of my clients. I've been counting to five for a long time. Mm -hmm. And really what I do expect is that uh, my enthusiasm uh, won't be a singular enthusiasm. The folks who are running will share that enthusiasm and because we will all be so excited to be in a position with a platform to do something to take Long Beach to the very next level, to the, to, to the highest heights that we can be at, mm -hmm. that excitement will, will allow us to do some of the things that we did in Leadership Long Beach. Uh, mm -hmm. As a Leadership Long Beach Class of 2000 graduate, I want to bring some of that energy to the city council and maybe even have Leadership Long Beach officially do something up at the mountain with council members where we can bond and get to know each, mm -hmm. other, get to know each other on a level beyond the, the day in and day out, Tuesday night minutia and business of the city. Let's get to know each other on a, on a deeper level. So really, my, my, bi my vision for the whole city is to, to get us all working together. I'll be able to do it on day one with the people who are there mm -hmm. and take advantage of the assets that we have in the city. We have a, a lot of assets from our people to our ports, from our airport to our parks. We are, in my opinion, the best city in the state of California, one of the best cities, cities in the nation. And Beverly O'Neill told me when I worked with her on the many trips to Sacramento and D.C., she said in her own way, she said, Carl, you know what? Long Beach is small enough that if you want to make a difference here, you can. But it's big enough that if you make a difference here, it will resonate and ripple throughout the world. Mm -hmm. And with an international port that already has international status as one of the best ports in the world and is the best port in the nation, with an airport that is just going leaps and bounds beyond where anybody thought it would be, it's beautiful. And I'm very proud to have that in the 5th District. I know that we can achieve a higher level of status in Sacramento, in Washington, D.C., and the region. It's unconscionable to me that we haven't had visits from our governors or our presidents in the last eight years, and I'd like to see that change. Now, we have less than five minutes, and with you two, I need like more like another hour just to get through the questions that I have remaining. Very, very thought-provoking uh, answers that you've both given, but in the three minutes now that we have left, um, closing thoughts from you both. What is it that you want people to remember as a result of what they've uh, heard tonight from both of you uh, as they contemplate in the months going forward. Let's start with you, Stacy, and with you, Carl. What is it that you want as a takeaway from tonight's uh, interview? I would say that I hope that residents know and, and they'll get the opportunity to meet me. We've been knocking on doors for weeks now. They'll know the genuineness I bring to this. I genuinely love my neighborhood mm -hmm. and whether it's the holiday progressive dinners or on Thursday when we're handing out the, the holiday candy. I've been investing in this community for a very long time. Um, earlier tonight before the show started, we were discussing the YMCA. Mm -hmm. And it, it brings me great pride when I sit down at a dinner table and someone from a table across the room runs across and says, Stacy, you were my camp counselor. Stacy, you were my YMCA hockey coach. Stacy, you were there and taught me youth and government and have changed my life. And I do that and I run for all of the constituents today because I have a genuine love for the people in this city. And I love the warm and fuzzies that I get when I give back. And okay. call that selfish, but I'm not gonna stop giving back. I've been giving back. This isn't something I woke up and decided, oh, I'm gonna start giving back. It's just my nature. My grandfather was a tree trimmer for the city. My grandmother was a, a, a school mm -hmm. participant with Long Beach Unified. And my mom's a servant at the courthouse. We love this city. It's been inbred with me. 
Um, my father was an entrepreneur and we have that entrepreneurial spirit. We love business, we get business, we know and understand what it takes to be successful at business. And for all of those reasons, um, you know that when you put your vote behind Stacey Mungo, it means that I will work tirelessly for all of the residents in the same ways that we have worked tirelessly over the last several years to ensure that our Community Watch program has 150 people turn out at our neighborhood meeting. Now, I want to give Carl my last minute <laughs> <laughs> because we have one minute I left. I love the city. Uh, I'm running because I love the city. I want to give back to it. I'm running because I know that day one I have the experience that I can transfer to the people of the district and the people of the city. I love this city and I love the 5th District. I moved in there because it's a great place to raise a family. I want to keep it that way and I want to take it to the next level. Um, I want folks to know that this is a journey and I love every step of it from the doors to the, to the cafes uh, to all the, all the things in between and I expect uh, on April 8th when we are celebrating our victory to uh, give a big warm hug to the people of Long Beach and thank them for the opportunity to serve them. Thanks to you, Carl. Thanks to you, Stacy. Thanks to all of you for watching. We're out of time, but not out of questions. We want you to keep up with us on Facebook, on Twitter, and look at us on padnet.tv if you want to see this show in the future. Thanks to our crew here for another great show. Have a great evening, and we look forward to keeping you in touch. Stay informed and stay engaged. Thank you.